Hey guys, uh, Drew here with you. I've got Keenan as my cameraman. What's um, up? I'm gonna try to make this as short and sweet as I can and not drag it out and bore you. But uh, the reason for this video and this interview is because the last weekend, a muzzle loader, I was just going all out, hard as I can, uh, and focusing on pulling the trigger and getting something on the ground. So I looked at my gun and looked at my camera equipment. And I set the camera equipment down and decided it was time to hunt and focus on that. So, starting on December 19th, uh, me and my wife, we loaded up uh, with the intent to go and kill something. And just and just hunt and stay in the woods and do whatever we had to do. So, uh, quickly, we usually do a doe management hunt uh, over in Greene County, Kentucky, <clears throat> for a farmer over there. And that's what this was. Uh, we had a bunch of doe tags. I go over there every year and do this. Uh, but it's been a terrible season as far as, as buck hunting goes. Lost all my good deer on camera uh, early, mid-November. They were just gone on every farm that I had. Um, so anyways, I talked to the farmer and said, hey, you know, if, if I was to luck up and a good buck were to walk out, it's been an awful season. Can I have the green light to take him? And, uh, and he said, man, he said, we've got so many deer. He said, just go ahead. He said, if you have the chance and it's a good one, just go ahead and take it. So uh, fast forward, we got out Saturday afternoon, uh, a lot later than what I wanted to. But we, me and, again, the wife, we were walking into my usual spot that I set up and hunt. And as we were walking in, uh, three does came out of the thicket right in front of us. And so I was like, yep, we're done. We should have been here an hour and a half ago. I was aggravated. Uh, anyways, we got set up. Um, in fact, she has some footage that I'm sure you're getting ready to see of, of us going to find the deer and stuff, but uh, we set up under a tree, just ground hunting. Uh, I could, there's a, we were in a field, and then there was a finger of woods that came out, and then another field, and I could see through that finger, and I saw some does working around, so I actually got out in the cornfield, got prone, got set up, knew she was going to come my way, she got out in front of that finger, boom, muzzle over. Uh, I was nervous about the shot. She's probably 170 yards, and at about 180, my muzzle loader just it starts dropping, you know, quick. So, uh, anyways, I took the shot, felt good about it, but honestly didn't know if I hit her. I thought I did from the way she was running. So I told the air, I was like, typically I'd let her lay, um, you know, and hopefully let her die so she doesn't run off, because she ran out of sight uh, over the little hill there. I said, but. Let's go ahead and let's just track it. Let's see what happens. So we jumped up, couldn't find blood, went to the very backfield. It's a little rectangle. Um, no blood anywhere. And I said, I don't know what else to do other than to do a real quick sweep of the full perimeter of that, of that rectangle field. Uh, so I said, I'll be right back. And so I took off and I didn't make it two steps. And I said, hey, there she is. So found the doe, um, loaded her up, got out of there. Keenan and his wife came down uh, the next morning, or they came down that evening, and we went duck hunting the next morning. So we were actually set up uh, at the at our duck hunting spot, and Keenan, at right at sunrise, he looked up and he said, "Dude, he said there's a hammer. So there's a monster deer walking across the field up in front of us." Um, so after after the duck hunt was over, we were talking about that deer, and I said, "Man, I could just come here and hunt him, you know, this evening, and just set up, see what happens." Uh, as the crow flies, we weren't a mile from where from my deer hunt spot. Uh, anyways, fast forward again, decide not to go back, or decide not to hunt that spot that evening, and we went back and hunted the same place where I shot the other night before. We actually decided to pop up a blind. Uh, I was describing that finger that I could see the deer moving through. We set up a blind on the other side of that finger. Um, contemplated taking camera gear, didn't. Uh, glad I didn't for two reasons. One, the way that we, we were set up on an angle and the way that we, me and I had to sit in our chairs, our knees were up against the blind. There was nowhere to actually have a camera rolling or anything. Uh, so that, I guess, made me feel better in that sense that even if we had all of our gear, I couldn't have been filming. Uh, fast forward, we get set up. It's Sunday. It's the last day of muzzleloader. I know that this is my last hunt. No more archery hunting the rest of the year just because work, ducks, geese, everything else. It was all or nothing. Um, so we get set up on Sunday, probably around lunch, and hunt all evening. Don't see a thing. Probably 5 o'clock comes around. 
it's getting dark. Uh, I look over at her and I say, well, you know, I'm starting to accept the fact this is it's probably going to be a, you know, a tag soup year. First year I don't have a buck down in several. And so I'm aggravated. I'm, you know, I'm hurt. I'm disgusted. I'm angry. Uh, pride is hurt a little bit. But anyways, we sat there a little longer and, and she said, I, I think, it, no, 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 let me back up. All of a sudden, a doe comes out, probably 150 yards up on top of this ridge, just blazing through the top of the, the ridge there. And uh, I said, don't don't move. But I said, I bet you she's being chased just by the way that she's running. So for those of you who believe in the second rut, maybe that's what this was. So anyways, she takes off, gets out of sight. I'm sitting there with my eyes peeled. Don't see a thing. A few more minutes go by, nothing. I'm like, yep, that was it. You know, that was our only chance. Uh, I'm pretty pretty much done. So a couple more minutes goes by, and she says, I, I think I see a deer up there in the woods. And uh, I was like, where at? And she said, well, if you'll look over here behind this tree. And so I'm looking, and, and so she's actually, you know, looking with her naked eye. I've got Beanox, and I'm sitting there, and I can't find it. She said, yeah, she said, it's a big body deer. And she said, I think it's a buck. And I'm like, where? You know, this is killing me. And so I'm still glassing, can't find it. She said, oh, yeah. She said, yep, big body, big body, big horns. It's a shooter. I was like, oh my gosh. So this went on for what felt like an hour. Um, and, and she was giving me a play by play. Okay, he, he's up. Now he's laying down. All right, now he's making her up. And then all of a sudden she said, he's coming this way. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. I still can't see this deer. So also talking about filming it, I couldn't have filmed it anyways, cause I never saw it. Um, so anyway, she said, he's coming this way. He's coming this way. I still cannot find this deer. And uh, she reaches over and she grabs my arm and she said, get your gun get your freaking gun and so I again have no idea what's going on I grab my muzzle loader don't even see a deer she's freaking out over here I'm almost in tears because I, I can't see all this action she's watching and uh, all of a sudden I mean it's like it happened in an instant he comes out of the woods into this clearing and I've got a split second to make this shot and I all I see is horns I know he's a shooter and so I just pull up boom and uh, he, you know, he bright, bright two or three times and the smoke cleared. And I was like, man, I hope he's dead right there. And so I, again, like the night before I told her, I was like, typically I wouldn't just jump out of the blind and take off. You know, I'd, I'd let it calm down, let him die off. I was like, hold this, I gotta go. So I book it out there. He's dead, he dropped right there. Um, crazy, crazy story. So she gets the majority of the credit for all this, but, uh, but yeah, it was a wild weekend crazy 24 hours we left the house in somerset drove to green county shot a doe went to sleep got up duck hunted went straight back to the woods shot this guy uh, and went home all within about 24 hours so that's why it's not on film it's aggravating but uh i'm happy with the buck happy with the hunt and uh excited that i got to share all that with the wife so anyways y'all stay tuned with us and uh we're gonna go chase some ducks this weekend it's the last weekend uh, for ducks and then we're gonna start chasing some snow geese so anyways as always wake up and hunt man congratulations again drew another phenomenal big old bruiser buck that is three years in a row that but that drew has dropped a 150 class or higher buck i mean just an amazing amazing hunter um but as you just seen, this filming stuff is hard and it's not like we got a whole production team that goes out with us in the field. We're trying to all do this self film for the most part. And uh, you know, we all work full-time jobs, full-time plus overtime. And we, during season, spend every waking minute that we can break away from our jobs out in the field to share the experience with you. And, um, it's one thing we share, we, we do our best to share the story, the full story. And I can't tell you how many deer are saved because of a camera, you know, because we're trying to get that footage or we're trying to get the action shot. Are we trying to, you know, give you the experience that we're getting in the field? And it's sometimes really difficult. You know, it never fails that as soon as you stop recording, something cool happens and you miss it. Or you reach over and you double tap and you think you're recording and you go on about trying to harvest that animal. And re in reality, you actually shut the camera off. So, or you just get to like Drew's point where you're at the last part of your season, you know, you're getting into your last hours and you have to look at that camera or your gun and choose which one you're going to focus on more. And, uh, you know, congratulations to you, Drew, filling that tag, but more importantly, spending that time out there with your wife and creating that memory. Thank you for, uh, sharing your experience and your story with us. 
And, uh, you know, look, we do our best out here with Deer 30 Outdoors to share the full experience, but sometimes it's just about the story. And uh, as you just seen here, Drew put the camera down and went out and filled a tag. So amazing job. And uh, good luck. If you haven't already, get down there and hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell so you're notified when we're dropping these episodes. Uh, 2021 season's right around the corner. We're getting ready to get into full-on shed season here. It's uh, about the middle of February, so getting pretty close to having the majority of our bucks uh, dropped. So getting out uh, after those sheds, figuring out what's going on, hitting spring, starting to get our food plots and everything you know, in place and ready for yet another successful season here at Deer 30 Outdoors. So get down there, hit that subscribe button, and until next time... Guys, wake up and hunt.